Okay, with our logo project, we started with a sketch concept. And sometimes those sketch concepts can be pretty clean and ready to go. But often, as you're cutting out your vector shapes and making final decisions, you'll make little tweaks and little discoveries. So though I started initially just tracing over my sketch, I couldn't help but even out kind of the circles around the eyes, make them line up. And I also had a lot of fun. I have two versions actually of it. So if I look in my, my user guide, which shows my profile. I don't know why they don't have a My Profile button, but this was the version I ended in the last video, which pretty much matches the sketch, but just cleans everything up a little bit. But then I started to tweak it, because what's so nice about vectors is that each of these is like an individual paper cutout that you can move around, rotate, mess with. And I decided I wanted a little bit more dynamic eye movement through the, uh, through the project. So I rotated the circles around the eyes and shifted things around just a little bit. And I like this one better. So just little subtleties. It's good to make those changes in your black logo design before we go on to adding color. So what's the next step? The next step is to export it. So you click the export button. You want to export it as an SVG. It doesn't matter what the width or the height is because that is a vector file. We're going to download it as an SVG. You will find it wherever your computer downloads things. This is a chance for you to name it if you haven't named it yet. And I recommend naming it something like FA20 for fall 2020, your name, and then some description. So this is my black logo assignment. Now it's important to know where that is, what that is. So it's right there. And then I also saved it for my other version. So now I have basically two copies of it, right? If I try to open up an SVG on my computer, there is no easy program to open it. So it has to go to Illustrator. Or it can be opened in a web browser. I don't want Illustrator to open up right now. It takes a long time to open. But you can test your SVG by opening it in a web browser. So I'm trying to show you that with Safari. Let's see if that works. There we go. Now, how is this different than looking at a PNG? Well, notice that the background is gray, and notice that when I zoom in, I still never see any pixels, right? It's all perfectly cut out. I do notice that that black is a little bit less black than the other black. So I just didn't um, get to that one and select it and turn it dark black, which I could do in the vector program, but I'll show you how to, how to make up for that. The most important thing is that you have clear cutouts, right? Okay, now we're going to open Photo P. our good old raster program. Because in order to post them to Canvas, you're not able to post a vector file to Canvas, an SVG. We have to change it into a raster file. And the raster file we want to change it to, which is able to be posted online, is a PNG format. OK. so. When you open Photo P, you're immediately going to say New Project, or just File New, because you want to be able to set your size. So this new project, because this is a raster program, we want this new project to be of a good print 
quality, you know, a good print size. So we are going to make it in inches, eight by 10 inches tall, right? Kind of the smallest art standard. And then the dots per inch, we're going to make it 350, my preferred lab standard. It says dots per inch, DPI, but that's really pixels per inch. So 350. The background's white, eight, eight inches wide, 10 inches tall. There we go. Now what do I do? Just like we did with compositing, I am going to drag and drop the SVG onto my Photo P workspace. And it will come in with a transform box, right? And then I hold down shift and I grow it and I make it look, I, I make it this whatever size I want that I think looks good on that page. On that eight by 10. Think of the black in photo P that surrounds it. Think of that as a frame. And this is the image on white. So I can make mine pretty big on that eight by 10, especially because my logo is more vertical than horizontal. There we go, maybe about that size. Okay, next, I hit return to place it. I want you to notice that it is a smart object. We brought in a vector. This is the whole reason we took the time to do it. Because it is a smart object that is not rasterized, which means it is not tied to any pixels. Instead, it is tied to a vector, and it's just showing itself in pixels based on the pixel grid we set up. So that means I can resize this smart object to any size, and it will always be as clean as possible for that pixel format. So if I were to change the image size from being a 8 by 10, 350, to being 16 by 20, because I want to print it so much bigger, it's going to keep the exact same quality. In fact, it would even be better quality because it has more pixels than to show the, um, the vector. So now its image size is 16 by 20 by 350. But if I zoom in, I can keep zooming in now even more before I see pixels, right? Super clean. So as long as it's at least eight by 10 by 350, you're doing a good job. Okay, now here's the problem. This is a black cutout logo. So if I've tried to post it on Imgur into assignment six, which if you're really proud of your logo and you want to post it, um, let me show you what happens. So I would post it as a PNG, right? So I would turn off the background and I would say, file, export as PNG, just like we did with our emojis back in the day. And it's going to go to my downloads, and that's a place where I can name it. There it is. So I'm just going to call this test PNG. So there's my test PNG. Now, if I load this somewhere other than Canvas, because Canvas gives you a default light gray background. If I load it into a website, there it is. Because Imgur posts on black, right? So can you see it? 
I can't see it, but it's there. It's just a black shape. And that's because black on black doesn't look that good. So how can you make the logo more versatile? So it appears um, on more, well, let me, let me show you. First of all, to add an offset to this or to see how it works on different colors, and we're gonna do this with our spot illustrations in assignment seven too. I'm going to add a new background. I'm gonna duplicate the white background with Command J, and then I'm going to say, edit fill with gray. Say okay. Now this will make sure I don't have any like white shapes or unwanted shapes around my logo that I couldn't see on a white background. Then I'm gonna duplicate that, and I'm gonna edit fill that with 100% black. So this is a good kind of stress test for your logo. So it doesn't look so good on black. Looks fine on gray, looks fine on white. How can I get it to look good on a black background? I can add what's called an offset. So an offset is something that separates the logo shape from the background. And I can keep it a vector. So I'm gonna double click, and what I'm gonna add is just the most simple offset, which is a stroke, an outline around everything. So if I double click on my smart layer, I'll get to my layer styles. We've used these before. I'm gonna click on stroke and then I have the options. I don't want a red offset, not for my black logo. I want it to be white. So I'm gonna go all the way in the far corner, make sure it's perfect white and then say, okay. My photo P is going very slow, but it allows you to see clearly what I'm doing. Close programs I don't need. All right, that's good. So I have solid white. Now I have the options here. First is the position. I want it to position outside of my vector shapes at 100% opacity. And now I get to pick the size. So I'm just gonna scroll up and I get to decide how many pixels as soon as photo P catches up with me. I'm going to close some of these tabs. There we go. So that's, that's too thick, right? That kind of interferes. So I want to find the right amount. Now that's the simplest way to offset. We'll get into more um, more varied ways when we, we deal with spot illustration and with text, because we'll be using these layer styles more in the future. Come on, there we go. So 33 is what I want. You can also just type in your pixels. For my dimensions, for my design, that works well. It's gonna shrink, I think. <laughs> Come on. I'm gonna have to restart Photo P here. There we go. <laughs> well, 80 is not bad. I could go with 80, oh, but I don't like how close it makes the ear. So 33 is what I want. So remember, you can always edit these, go back to your options. I think 33 looked best. Just needs to, to catch, there we go. Okay, so then you say okay. And now we'll see if it looks okay on black. Ultimately, ultimately, if it looks good on black. You can also have a soft-edged offset, and instead of stroke, you would use 